This is our first class of the new semester. As a Hong Kong resident, it is our obligation to learn our history. As far back as 214 BC, Hong Kong was under the rule of the Qin Dynasty and governed by Panyu County. Since then, Hong Kong has become an indispensable part of China for almost 2,056 years. But things hit a bump in the road in the mid-19th century. The Qing Empire was defeated in the First Opium War waged by Great Britain in 1840 and was forced to cede Hong Kong Island to Britain in the Treaty of Nanking in August 1842. The loss of the Second Opium War forced the Qing Empire to sign the Convention of Peking, whereby Kowloon, south of Boundary Street, was also ceded to Britain. On July 1, 1898, the Second Convention of Peking saw the Qing Dynasty lease the territory south of the Shenzhen River, including New Kowloon, Lantau, and more than 200 outlying islands to the British administration for 99 years. Japan occupied Hong Kong during World War II in December 1941, as locals relentlessly fought the invaders across the territory. During that period, Many patriots emerged in Hong Kong, including Kung Fu master Gang De Hai, and academics such as Mao Dun, Zhu Daofen, and Fan Changjiang, who made great contributions to Hong Kong's literature and press development. Prominent Chinese poet and scholar Wen Yi Du wrote the Song of the Seven Sons in the 1920s to depict Hong Kong's separation from the motherland. A total of 259 people died, and Wu Kao Tong Martyrs Monument was erected to commemorate their sacrifice. The Japanese occupation ended after Japan's surrender at the end of World War II on August 15, 1945. In the 1980s, the Chinese government and Great Britain began to discuss the future of Hong Kong. The one country, two systems principle put forward by Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping in 1981 laid the foundation for a practical solution. 22 rounds of negotiations were held between the two sides after Margaret Thatcher's first visit to China in 1982. On December 9, 1984, the Sino-British Joint Declaration was signed. It stated that China would resume exercising its sovereignty over Hong Kong from July 1, 1997. Meanwhile, in 1990, the principle of one country, two systems was enshrined in Hong Kong's basic law, the region's mini constitution. On July 1, 1997, at midnight, Chinese national flags were raised in Hong Kong's special administrative region signaling its return to the motherland after more than 150 years of separation. In the past 22 years, people on both sides have continuously forged and strengthened their bonds. In 1998, Hong Kong donated 680 million yuan, more than 80 million US dollars, when floods submerged large parts of southern China. After an 8.0 magnitude earthquake hit southwest China's Sichuan province in 2008, the Hong Kong SAR government and residents again showed their love for the mainland by donating 13 billion Hong Kong dollars, about 1.7 billion US dollars, and channeling hundreds of reconstruction projects and investments to the area. Hong Kong entertainment mogul and philanthropist Sir Run Run Shaw donated 100 million Hong Kong dollars, and charity shows on his station TVB amassed another 220 million Hong Kong dollars. People in Hong Kong and the mainland are all Chinese. It is an undeniable truth that blood is thicker than water.